It started small and simple. On a cool fall evening in 2012, a group of students brought together by a paper flyer and a passion for education met with a woman in a coffee shop. I like to say that the founding of the student voice team was at least as organic as the coffee in the shop that we first met. At the time, the Printer Committee for Academic Excellence was exploring ways to include students in its work to improve Kentucky schools. Back then, we students didn't know much about education policy making or even the Pritchard Committee. But we were drawn by the idea that students must have a role to play in the work to make our schools better. After years of spending 35 hours a week in the classroom each week, we felt we had some ideas to share about what was working and what wasn't in our schools. We began to meet regularly at the Kentucky Educational Television, KUT, to talk about some of the educational issues that were important to us. For the first time, we had the opportunity to question and explore the system in which we had passively participated in for so long. How could we prove that student voice matters? It would all lead to a presentation we planned for the Pritchard Committee Spring Meeting. We laid out the case for integrating students in the organization's core work, seeking approval to put our idea into action. In short, it was official. We became the Pritchard Committee's student voice team. We spent the following year demonstrating what that could mean. We started by attending Pritchard Committee meetings and study group sessions, and after observing the Pritchard Committee in action, we began to take more initiative. We joined their We Can't Wait campaign, partnering with other advocates, and started speaking at local rallies about our firsthand experience with problems caused by inadequate education funding. We wrote op-eds about under-resourced schools and academic standards. We presented at policy conferences and joined Pritchard Committee staff in testifying before the state legislature on the role of student feedback in bolstering teacher effectiveness. We were soon emboldened enough to launch a legislative campaign of our own. House Bill 236 was our response to the sudden resignation of Fayette County's superintendent um, and our resulting discovery that students were excluded by law from participating in the process to replace him. Sure that students ought to be included in this process, along with other key stakeholders, we researched and drafted a bill that would allow districts to add one student to their superintendent screening committees. In between classes and homework, we secured the sponsorship of the House Education Chair. We met with legislators and testified in committee. We wrote press releases and op-eds. We held press conferences. We met with educational boards. And we mobilized our network on social media. This effort culminated with a spectacular rally drawing hundreds of students and adult allies from across the state to the steps of the state capitol. Pass our bill! On these steps, we change the future of this commonwealth. Go get them! Generating widespread national coverage. And while the bill failed in the final hours of the session, we knew that we had sparked something bigger. We showed people that even though we were, for the most part, too young to vote, we were not too young to have a voice in public life, especially when it came to our public schools. Even while we were lobbying the legislator, we were doing quieter work, far out of the spotlight. That year, as many of us were heading to college, we began to investigate the post-secondary transition process. In particular, we wanted to know why the jump from high school to college, trade school, or the workforce was so difficult for many of our peers. To answer this question, we turned to policy experts, fellow students, studies and statistics, and of course, our own experiences. That project, which we have since dubbed College Tripwires, and our experience campaigning for increased student involvement in school governance, led us to realize that in order to really integrate students in education policy research and advocacy, we had to amplify voices of students well beyond our own. And there has been no looking back. Ever since we've been visiting schools in all pockets of Kentucky, soliciting the stories from Kentucky's hardest to reach students to ensure that they do not go unheard. A natural outgrowth of this renewed commitment to listening to students has been our student voice audits. We've pioneered a new method by which we speak with every single stakeholder of our school system. 
parents and teachers, administrators, and of course, students. We compile and analyze this data in order to provide a full student voice audit and report for members of the community, for us to learn and grow from our experiences and ultimately improve school climate and the learning environment for all students. We've also expanded our work to include students in school governance. We conducted original research on the status of meaningful student representation in school decision making, the results of which we published in our Students as Partners Policy Report. And are currently conducting workshops across the state in order to help schools figure out how to better integrate student voice in the way they're run. And we've expanded on our college readiness research. We will soon publish our very first book, which includes original data about college readiness and stories from kids all across the state the students behind the statistics. Moved by the power of these first-hand accounts, we began to explore how we could best share them with the rest of the world. So we created the Student Voice Forum, a student-run blog which aims to enrich education policy discussions by pairing student stories with statistics. And even as we've moved into more grassroots work, we've remained on the lookout for opportunities to work with policymakers at the grass tops. In 2016, that approach was embodied by the Powerball Promise Campaign. We formed a coalition to urge the legislature to restore lottery-funded need-based scholarships. Its success hinged upon our ability to work with other advocates and lift up the voices of students who are struggling to make the next step after high school. We are here today to take a stand. A stand for college affordability. A stand for Sam, Nanny, Jay, and the 42,000 students who do not receive the need-based scholarships they qualify for every year. Let's continue to push to make college an attainable ambition rather than an impossible dream. The subsequent restoration of $14 million to need-based college scholarships means that thousands of students are now able to receive extra financial support for continuing their education after high school. Five years of working to transform Kentucky education has translated into five years of showing Kentucky, the country, and ourselves what is possible when we leverage untapped student voice and school improvement efforts. And though we could never have expected what would unfold after that simple meeting and that organic coffee shop, five years in, we now have clear and unequivocal proof that when it comes to ensuring our education system is the best that it can be. Student voice has to matter, student voice must matter, and our mission is to ensure that student, student voice, voice matters. matters.